If you want to know how to analyze data like this, watch this video. Most probably you're going to split this into multiple columns and that's not the right way. This is a table, its name is data. I'm going to close this file and create a new blank file. In that, we are going to import data from Excel. Data, get data from file Excel. I only want this table and we want to transform the data. So this is power query. There are row numbers, but I want those numbers to be a part of the table. That's called adding an index column. So add a column starting from one. Now I want a copy of this. I don't want to really duplicate the data. Let's call it skills. And here I don't want the trainer name because we already have it in the base data. And now I not only want to split, I want to also put them in their own rows. So this one will become two rows, Word and Excel. Two will become two more rows, Excel and PowerPoint. Very powerful feature, sort by delimiter. It has automatically understood the comma, but go to advanced options. And here you say split them into rows and then click OK. There are some extra spaces which we will get rid of by using transform and trim. Now skill skills is clashing, so I'll just call it expertise. A data cleaning and shaping job is done. Now I want to load this to data model because based on that index column, I need to create a relationship. Let it load, then I go to power pivot data model. And in the data model, we go to diagram view. And in the diagram view, you just drag index from here to here. Notice on this side, basically index is a person. So this part is unique. And here one person has multiple skills. So this is a one to many relationship. Having done that, we don't really need the index column. So I'm going to hide it. Now let's come back and create a pivot table from the data model. Now, if I want to know how many people have a specific skill, I go to the skills table directly. I put expertise that will give me unique expertise I have and I also put expertise here. And now I can see I have six Excel experts, seven PowerPoint experts and so on. Now, if I want to know which person has what expertise, then I go to data and put the trainer name first and below that expertise. So this Ajaya has three, whereas Andrea has two skills. So any kind of analysis becomes much easier now using this method. Now, a more complex scenario is survey results where we have similar data, but we have multiple questions which are multi-select. And for each question, we have some kind of comma delimited list. How do you handle this kind of analysis? The concept remains same, but for each multi-select option, you'll have to create a separate mapping table. So let's see this in action. But before we do that, these column names actually have the questions which were asked in the survey, which makes it very cumbersome. So I'm just going to map them to questions and just give them simpler names. The name of this table is survey data. So let's create a blank new Excel file and get the data. This is the base table. We start with adding the index column. Let's move it to the beginning. Now create references. If there are two questions, create two reference tables. Question number becomes the table name. Now for each question table, we will keep that particular question and the index column and remove other columns. And you know what to do. Right click, split column by delimiter. This is not space, be careful. It's commas, advanced option, rows and click OK. Next step, transform trim. Same thing we'll repeat for Q2. And now let's close and load to data model. Go to data model, diagram view. We have multiple questions now. So the base table remains the survey data and the index columns become the foreign key. Create a pivot table from data model. And now we can do all kinds of analysis. What is the type of work people do? That was the second question. So if I say question two and question two, this will give me five people do chat, one person does forms and so on. And then if you want to know who does what, 
we just add the survey data name of the person one last thing I want to talk about is spelling mistakes. How do you know even that there are spelling mistakes? Because this can be a very long piece of data. So make a reference, make it a temporary table, keep the desired question column, remove other columns, and remove duplicates. Sort it in ascending order. And wherever you find some problem, right click in that cell and say replace values with the correct spelling. Try this out. Let me know if it works for you and use it. Teach it to your colleagues and friends. That's it for now. Thank you.